Welcome back. Do you know what Gadgeteer is? It's everything on this table. If you know what that is, you probably really love it. Let's talk about that. I know, I know, GHI have discontinued Gadgeteer. You love Gadgeteer just like I do, and we need to figure out a way to make Gadgeteer work. Now, since you have an insider on the GHI side, I will help you make that happen. Now, what is Gadgeteer? Let's, you know what's Gadgeteer, but for those who don't, let's get into it really quick. Gadgeteer is, this is not the official logo, but something I made that looks like the logo. Uh, it's, a, it's a technology by Microsoft Research. It started in the UK. It's basically a way to take um, a processor board, a main board that has like all the brains, and then you get modules that have like sensors or buttons or control like relays and like you see tons of examples here through a standard wire it's always the exact same wire you would connect the main board to these uh, modules this is very very similar to groove modules from seed studio if you know what those are except this cable has like 10 wires so it's more capable you get 3.3 volts and 5 volts um, and you get uh, seven different signals so you have actual spy bus on there where on the groove you have just the two signals and you only have the one voltage. So it's more capable. Now click modules uh, by Microelectronica, those are, they, they have more pins, so there's SPI uh, on these, but those are not connected through cables. So you would have a processor board and then there's one mo single module to plug on there. So you can really plug 10 things on there. It's really it, the board would be impractical, would be the board would be too large. So I'll, I'll, just, I'll just grab an example here and show you. These are main board examples. So you can see how there are many, many sockets on here. I think this is like 14 or 16 or maybe more sockets on a single board. And you can take one of these modules and connect them, the, to connect them in through standard wires. So I have like a little demo like on over here. So this would be how this is power, for example, connected to the main board, connected to a display, and it's all using the same cable. From a main board, you can connect all kind of modules. We have several examples here. So uh, this would be, for example, a uh, GPS um, relay. There is, we made also another one, the uh, larger relay. Um, we have display options. Uh, we have character display even, uh, some modules. I don't think we released this one that has like several buttons. And then the other modules like um, cameras, RFID, potentiometer, SD cards, the, the temperature sensor, humidity, uh, breakout boards. <laughs> there are, it just the list goes on and on and on in Gadgeteer. With all this beauty, why discontinue Gadgeteer? Why GHI decided to stop all this? This is great. Well, many reasons. First of all, Gadgety relies on something called .NET Micro Framework. It's, .NET Micro Framework is also a, uh, an offer by uh, Microsoft, a, pro a Microsoft product, a .NET interpreter that runs on small system. And that's the core of .NET Gadgeteer. Unfortunately, there hasn't been development on .NET Micro Framework for years. So the last really good supported Visual Studio with .NET Micro Framework. By the way, Visual Studio was used to program devices with .NET, uh, with .NET Micro Framework. It's Visual Studio 2013. Uh, there was like a 4.3 release for the software and then 4.4, which we didn't get into because there was really no serious commitment going toward, toward .NET Micro Framework. So, and that's being the base for Gadgeteer. Gadgeteer couldn't move forward. Another piece of Gadgeteer is the designer that, uh, the Gadgeteer itself is open source, so you could grab that and modify the source code. And, but then there is a designer that goes on Visual Studio that's also a part of the Gadgeteer system, ecosystem. Um, it's basically a way on Visual Studio to drag and drop um, uh, modules and then connect them and then this will generate some kind of like setup code. It's not necessary, but it's very nice for st uh, students, for somebody that's getting started. Now, that is not open source, it was never released. So we don't have that piece, so that couldn't be moved to, let's say, like the newer Visual Studio releases. Uh, the core dot in micro framework that has several issues and it didn't move forward. Now, 
it's not just that. Now, in my personal opinion, I also think a big problem for Gadgeteer, Gadgeteer didn't use .NET Micro Framework as, um, it didn't open Micro Framework, .NET Micro Framework to users to be, to be used the way it should be with modules, it took that all away from users. So when you plug in a module, you it abstracts everything away from you, which is nice if you are a beginner, you add a button and to you it's just a button. You don't know anything about digital inputs, digital outputs, it's just a button and it just works. That's beautiful for school, for somebody that is learning, but for anything serious, this, this whole concept falls apart. Why? Well, one day I want to commercialize this and turn my prototype where I added buttons, I had a GPS, an SD card, and I have a uh, tracker, a, a vehicle tracker. And I'm recording all that on an SD card. Now, that doesn't really work because when you're ready to go to a commercial design and you want to take the cables out and you put everything on a circuit, all your software, all your develop development is based on using Gadgeteer, the Gadgeteer ecosystem, the software, everything that goes along with it. So now you find yourself going back from zero and redoing Gadgeteer. So all that, to me, going to a commercial, from like prototype to commercial, it fell apart. And now for education, um, the software worked great, but then the hardware, was okay, but then it didn't always work because with these uh, cables that go on Gadgeteer, this is a Gadgeteer cable in a socket, and you can see this is how you and disconnect the cable and, and plug it back in, and you would have to hold the cable. You would have to hold the cable really close to the uh, connector. If you pull it up here, you end up damaging the cable because it's it, it's on an angle, and you you end up pushing, especially if you push it like to the side. So a lot of kids did not understand this. So for all the, for older kids or professionals that understand how they need to remove and insert the cables, this works quite well actually. Now that we know what's good and bad about Gadgeteer, how can we use Gadgeteer? And this is what we are going to provide to get you to use Gadgeteer again. Um, first of all, .NET Micro Framework, we stopped doing that, as you know. Uh, we, we did several talks about that. It's already out. You can go and download it today and try it out to yourself. We have started our own operating system that we're calling TinyCLR. OS. Tiny CLR is basically we started with .NET Micro Framework and we are redoing everything to get you the best operating system you wish for that is modern, runs with Visual Studio and other things that we are considering as well and then at the same time you're running that on a really tiny microcontroller. Now to use Tiny CLR OS that's needed you need Tiny CLR OS for the main boards that we already offered, that the main boards we have offered before uh, for Gadgeteer. Uh, so like the Spider, the Spider 2, uh, Cerberus, uh, Reaper. All these boards need to run Tiny CLR OS as a core to start with. Now we already have um, G30, G80, G120, these are the core systems, our core uh, system on modules or chipsets. These already support Tiny CLR OS, so that automatically comes to the main board. So your main board, if not today, very, very, very soon, in the next few days, weeks, not months, uh, all your boards will be running Tiny CLR OS. At least that's the goal. There might be some obstacles that might take a little bit longer time. So the goal that you have, Tiny CLR OS running on all cores we have uh, offered for Gadgeteer. Now, once the core running on the system, you can just use Tiny CLR OS and you can access GPIO, SPI, all the buses, etc., etc. But this doesn't make it super easy like Gadgeteer is. But then we had that issue with Gadgeteer where when going from Gadgeteer to non gadgeteer you had to redo everything so I, the way we are doing it is we are giving you means of using the modules and the main boards easier but then this will make it easy to transition to a product that is non gadgeteer because there's no you're not for example there's no gadgeteer core if you know what that is there's no gadgeteer dll that goes into the system altogether you're 100% relying on tiny clr os which is nearly identical to the Windows API. So if you're using um, 
the Windows Universal uh, Windows WP, I forgot the acronyms. It's basically if you're programming your Raspberry Pi, you know how that works, to toggle a pin. The same exact code, or very, very small similar code, would run on TinyCLROS. Now what else do you need besides TinyCLROS? What we are giving you, and this is coming in the next release, is pin definitions for the main boards. So when you grab a main board and you need to know what pin goes on socket 3, pin 5. That would be very hard to determine if you don't understand hardware. If you know hardware, you can just open the schematic and see what's connected to what. Well, we made this easier for you. So in the next release, you will get in the pin, uh, we're giving you a pin uh, class, and the pin class has the definition for everything. So for example here, um, you would have Fez Spider or Fez Spider 2, that should be dot GPIO pin, uh, dot, and then this gives you options. So for example, we have debug LED, that would be one of the options. So this should be the first thing you do, blink the LED that is already on the main board. Or if you want to access the socket, so let's say I want pin 3 on uh, socket 2. Again, fastspider.gpio pin dot socket two dot, and then you get a list of available pins. And since this was thanks to IntelliSense and the code we're and this class we're providing, you would automatically know what exists, what doesn't exist through IntelliSense while you're coding. So let's say you, you type socket two dot, and then you only get pin three, no other options. Well, this will automatically tell you that GPIO is only available on that specific pin, not the other pins. So we have covered the main board. We have TinyCLR running on there. You have covered the pins. And this is not just GPIO. We have analog, PWM, UART, SPI, everything in that class. Now, we covered that piece. Now, the last needed piece is the actually module drivers. How does that work? Well, instead of giving you modules that just drop in and you don't know what's going on, let's turn that into a Nougat package, something that you can import and use but then you can also use on non gadgeteer products. If we have a GPS driver, why should the GPS driver be so hard core, uh, hard tied to gadgeteer itself? One day you go to a commercial design and you want to use GPS, okay, use GPS. The same driver, the same Nougat package, grab it in your project and you are automatically uh, using GPS. Now, what you would need and this is, we're testing that theory right now, and we want your feedback, of course, especially when we uh, start uh, uh, shipping some sample software. Uh, this is all in the works. So, for example, uh, a, let's talk about GPS again. GPS, the, the driver for GPS, you just have to tell it which UART you're using, because GPS just needs UART, serial port. It needs to tell you, you need to tell it which UART to use. So, if you plug in, the GPS to socket 5 that has UART on there. Well, you can easily come here and type for spider dot uh, UART dot, and you will get a list of sockets that have UART. You, through code, this will tell you everything. You don't need a designer. This is the designer, it's IntelliSense. So first spider dot U serial port or dot UART dot will give you a list, socket 4 and 6, let's say. Then you know your GPS will work in 4 and 6. And that is what you need to pass to your GPS driver. Done. Works. Beautiful. You can still use your gadgeteer. Dust them off. I need your help. These guys here don't want to do a gadgeteer, but I'm on your side. Let's see what we can do about that. We'll see you next week.